Today's video is sponsored by Elegance and Geekery. When looking back at all the videos that I've posted since having my big comeback, I've thought, hmm, this is a whole lot of nostalgia bait. But it's not enough. Middle school was either great or absolutely awful. If it was great for you, then you may be delusional or have severe memory loss. I simply don't make the rules. I doubt it's just my generation of middle school. I'm 21, almost 22, by the way, to kind of give you a reference. But man, yeah, we, we really did do anything we could to try and distract ourselves. Matching with your BFF was an absolute must. Claire's best friend jewelry, are you kidding me? An absolute necessity. And if someone that you thought you were close with got a set with somebody else, oh, 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 war. War. I'd say I'm quite a competitive person, and I have a theory that it is due to the environment of carton milk and this blue sticky tag. It is kind of strange to think about how competitive kids are. I feel like there are a lot of traits, obviously, that you get from your parents, but competitiveness is just not one of the first ones that come to mind. What? What do you want? Maybe it's the fact that at this age, being cool is just very important to us. I want to add to the competitive nature of my experience by saying that my school had uniforms. Only every once in a while were we able to dress down. That's what we called it when we got to wear like normal clothes. If we were trying to raise money for something, it was a holiday or it was your birthday. And if you were not wearing Abercrombie or Justice, you could absolutely kiss being at the cool kids table a goodbye. Basically what I'm trying to segue to is that materialistic things were very important. Then again, I guess nothing really... Then again, I guess uh, nothing has really changed. I was 100% that annoying ass child that basically begged my mother for anything when it cycled into popularity and bless her soul, she usually got it for me. So maybe it was matching with your BFF, Target training bras, pizza on Fridays, Scholastic Week that got you through. Or maybe it was the cycle of trends that guided your attention away from unnecessarily mean kids and our busted education system. Middle school had so many fads that were nationally huge. I don't know about internationally, so if you're from a different country and you had any of these at your school, I would absolutely love to know. This was most definitely not an excuse to be able to relive my childhood because tax season is here and I am tired of being an adult. I almost feel like there were two or three big fads per year. Some were longer than others and some only really grew popularity in certain groups of people. I'm sorry, I gotta say it, you know popular little blue eye, blonde hair, Susie is not playing Yu-Gi-Oh at recess. I know, I, I know, I think, I think Yu-Gi-Oh is cool, but the world just does not work like that. Clothing trends, of course, also came into popularity, but I don't know. Something about the fads just tickled the nostalgia part of my brain just a little bit more. Maybe it's just that a toy doesn't usually typically become cringy with age. This, though, I would rather be burnt alive than have to walk into a justice ever again. If you do, though, Please bring sunglasses for the sake of your eyeballs. Okay, I'm done roasting. Sorry, Justice. I still don't like you. Before we get on with the video, do you currently like the horns that I'm wearing? Well, I got them from the sponsor of today's video, Elegance and Geekery. They are a small home-based business that doesn't just make horns either, but also a bunch of gaming and wearable accessories. They have clip accessories, headphone accessories, jewelry, and cosplay products for all of your favorite gaming characters. The horns can go in different directions and honestly just feel so nice. And the fact that you're able to customize the colors on top of it all is just so cool. They're currently expanding, but they already have such a great base for just starting. I actually wore a pair of the horns when I went out for a different segment in this video and I got so many compliments on it. Maybe it's because I was in Little Tokyo and that's kind of the demographic, but overall, I got so many compliments. So if you'd like to have some awesome, unique, fun touches to your look, I would definitely click the link in the description below. Predictable, I get it, I know, but listen, I had to start with a boom, you know, the most iconic one of all. Let me take you back. You walk to the mall entrance and then boom, there you are, the food court where you smell fresh sabaro and bourbon chicken. You walk a little farther and oh my God, what is that? I will never shop there. You walk past the many phone kiosks, giggle at Victoria's Secret, and then suddenly you're there, gasp, 
silly band booth. Before I talk about the chokehold silly bands had on this generation, there is something that I must do. One eternity later. Best tax write-off in history. Let me talk about this as quick as possible because I am indeed losing circulation in my arm. Honestly, imagine that hospital visit. I'm sorry, sir. He didn't make it. Oh no, what happened, doctor? Too much swag. Yeah. My apologies, I did indeed pull out the green screen for this video. Even if you didn't own Silly Bands, I'm sure you've at least heard of them. They were affordable and super accessible once they grew in popularity. You could buy a set of 12, which was 250, or you could have got the 24 pack, which it looked like this. What was meant to be a cute Japanese invention to basically help prevent people from wasting and just throwing away regular rubber bands turned into the most iconic part of our youth. But at the peak of silly band popularity they would literally wear this many if not more everywhere this is 72 71 and most definitely school was not excluded from this it did eventually get so bad though that i remember so vividly that on the school announcements they announced that you were only able to wear three silly bands three because i have mentioned that now i'm going to take all of these off and only wear three my wrist is actually starting to hurt. Oh my lord, not worth it. Oh my god, ow, ow. Because of this rule, you only had three chances, basically, to one-up your classmates. At recess, we would even have trading rings where kids would trade their rarest silly bands and then come crying to you the next class period saying that they want it back. Sorry, bud, but it is mine now. I worked hard for it and you can go eat dirt. School eventually found out about the whole trading thing because kids were crying, the recess monitors, they were tattling, and it all came crashing down. No more silly bands. Seriously, do you know how much my dad paid for these? The Kardashians are wearing them. Why can't I? It is actually kind of crazy if you really think about it because the downfall of silly bands really came from schools banning them if we couldn't wear them where we spent most of our lives and spent the most times with our friends then what was the point in buying them and continuously growing your collection there isn't sometimes we would still wear them when going out like to the mall or something but most of our collections kind of just got shoved in the deep depths of our childhood rooms only to be thrown out a few years later once they resurfaced or maybe you did keep them i wouldn't be surprised if a few of you guys still have a hefty collection <laughs> if so can I have a few? Maybe in a few decades, I can try and sell one to Rick Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, moving on. Thank you, silly bands, for your service. Japanese fast food erasers may look like a miniature fast food meal. Eat them. Fast food erasers are fun and safe to use. Each one is made from lead PVC toxic material, and they work great. If any of these had an international boom, I feel like it would be the Japanese erasers. There was just nothing quite like being in class, ass hurting because you've been sitting for the last five hours, listening to your monotone, miserable teacher talk about a subject that you just do not understand whatsoever, and looking over to the right-hand corner of your desk and just seeing your little buddy chilling. Not a care in the world. Could they erase? Yes. Did I erase with them? Absolutely not, you psychopath. Unless it was the ugly popsicle one, then yeah, no, yeah, you can use that one. You're good on that one. But you'd usually buy them in packs, although I feel like I remember them selling individually as well. My cousin and I hoarded. We hoarded Japanese erasers. Her though? Dude, my cousin had the sickest Japanese eraser collection. I am so sorry, Haley, but I have to admit to you, I definitely stole a few of your erasers back in the day. <laughs> For those of you who may not know, these were really cute erasers that kind of came apart like a puzzle. And overall, they were just so fun and nice to have around. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie, my arm is still hurting from the silly band. <laughs> they originated in Japan in 1980s, but it wasn't until 2006 when they made their way to the USA. I wanna say that these had a dramatic shift in middle school culture, but almost everybody, if not everybody, had one. Whether you found it, you were given one, or you had been buying them. You betcha though, we definitely had more trading rings. <laughs> I actually thought of doing this video due to Japanese racers because every time that I go to Little Tokyo because I live in LA, I make eye contact with them 
and truthfully, I just, I just wanted an excuse to buy them, and this was my excuse, <laughs> so I will be taking you to Little Tokyo with me. Let's go. Oh my god, guys, are you okay? I'm fine, but why is my arm white? What about you, Claire? I'm chilling. Okay. <laughs> This is my Tom Nook impression. My milkshake bring all the boys to the yard. And hey, bitches. <laughs> hey, um. Uh... What the fuck? It's teeth. Mm. I'm in a different part of my house and I am using a boob microphone. So if it sounds weird, it was only $25. As you can see, I got some Japanese erasers and I also bought a lot of other things as well. That's just how little Tokyo goes. You, you wanna see, you wanna see what I got? All right, all right. Oh, wow. I took everything out and let's talk about the iconic one. I got the desserts because I absolutely had to. The way this bitch right here had a, had a grip on me. Let's start with the desserts because they're the main characters. Wow. I do not remember these two um, at all. So I don't know if they are a, you know, a new addition. Quite possible. It has been a solid 85 years. You want one? Is he even in shot? Moving on though, I didn't really want to get this pack because it didn't it didn't exactly have what I wanted, but what it did have. This little bitch. They used to have this hamster in a ton of colors, a ton of colors. And they even sold a pack with just multiple hamsters. And it was all, all looked like this, but they were all different colors. Like it wasn't orange, it'd be pink or blue. Oh, ow. I'm gonna do a close up. I'm actually just gonna put that back in. I don't think I had this hedgehog, but my cousin did. I don't think I stole it, but I thought about it. Ow, these are actually harder than I remember. Oh wow, he like really comes apart. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I can't, I can't really get him back together if I'm being quite honest. I do have to say though, they're so cute. <laughs> You know, I wish that there was more to say. Their erasers that are cute. I don't exactly remember them getting banned at my school, although I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me that they did. There was often a trend with things that us kids love. That being that adults would rip it from our tiny, vulnerable hands and just say, Because I said so. I do also want to give a shout out to Fooey erasers. You don't remember the name? Yeah, I didn't either, but here's what they look like. These had quite a fat grip on my middle school, pretty much all ages. Every grade I feel like had them. These ones I did use as erasers, but I would only ever use that little top part and then his ears. So then he would just become bald. Guess what though? Banned. Moving on. There's nothing to do. Have no fear, Fun Loom is here. Who wants Fun Loom bands? Stand up and clap your hands. Fun Loom, Fun Loom, Fun Loom. Girls dig it. It's my favorite color. I feel like this started getting popular a little bit later in my high school. Hello. <coughs> this started becoming popular a little bit later into my middle school experience, but it had just as much of an impact, that's for sure. As I talk about loom bracelets, I'm going to attempt to make one. Never successfully did so. So let's see if uh, now being 21 years old might change that. Oh my God, dude, it looks just as complicated as I remember. Okay, simple chain. Great. <laughs> Black and pink. Mm -mm -mm. That seems like my cup of tea. I was one of those people that was either gifted a loom or I bought it off of somebody. Yes, I was buying bracelets off of people at the ripe age of 10. <laughs> that completely contradicts what I just said. Sorry. <laughs> this started becoming popular a little bit later into my middle school experience. Um, obviously I was not working in middle school, so I would just find dollar bills in the bottom of my mom's purse. Thank you mother for 
funding my addiction. How many of these do I need? Hi, kitty. You want to say hi? Mm. This bitch is using her fingers. So do I need this or not? I don't really want to admit it, but these were definitely more popular than silly bands. I feel like the range of ages were just a lot more drastic. And overall, it's marketed as an experience, which silly bands didn't really have. You just went to the mall and bought them. Bitch, put this in. Is this mirrored? I'm just gonna do it the same way she does it. Okay, or they, sorry, I don't know who you are. Typically you would bring these little things to like sleepovers and it would be the star of the show. People would bring them to recess and just overall because you could customize it just made it more fun. I remember when I would put like an order in with my friend, I would ask for like the super complicated designs and I would tell them my colors and they would serve, they would do a great job. Me though, for some reason, this just never made sense. And every time I would try it, I would have a large breakdown <laughs> and just cry for no reason. <laughs> this also kind of brought back like BFF matching culture. Claire's was always one step ahead though and 100% the superior choice, but not everyone can afford a $16 necklace set for their new best friend of the week, babes. So. This was the replacement. I kind of have a confession though. They're like really ugly. <laughs> like some of them are cool, I guess, but I don't know, you're putting in, you're putting in a lot of work for something that looks so goofy. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's fine. That'll fit my wrist, right? I can't really tell. Am I skinny? Rotate loom. I don't really know what to do. Now it's getting complicated. I am, again. 21 years old and <laughs> I don't get it <laughs> which oh I have to <sighs> oh my God. it's too big <laughs> pull back rubber band mm -hmm. and then what yeah, how do yeah, you yeah. you have a smaller one so it's the biggest oh what is this I think I'm just done. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. No. <laughs> to this day, I have never been able to finish a loom bracelet. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's different, but you know, on the whole bracelet wave, I want to talk about slap bracelets. But I don't know. I just don't feel like she deserves her own section. You know? Slap bracelets were actually popular in the 90s, but they had to come back later on. Very quickly though, it wasn't popular for a very long time, which is kind of why I felt like it didn't need its own section. Just as quick as it became popular, it already was dying out. Did I still buy them for the video though? Yes. I feel like they were advertising these to the wrong crowd. Do you know how much slap bracelets satisfied my hyperactive young brain? I never wanted to be loud in class when I'd play with my slap bracelet. So hold on, hold on, I'll show you what I would do. Enough to get me by, dude. I feel like I should show these more. Um, what if I hold my mic, what if I hold my mic like this? You can really just see everything. <clears throat> yeah. I always liked the rubber. <laughs> I can't take myself seriously. I actually always preferred the rubber ones over these metal ones. Sometimes the metal ones actually hurt. Apparently there was actually a time where people were getting cut by the metal ones. Can't relate. This is where my Beyblade battle begins. This truly changed recess for my classmates and I. We would be praying for rainy days so we could have indoor recess and we could whip out the plastic battlefield and just go to town. We, for some reason, weren't allowed to bring our Beyblades outside. I don't know. A literal life-threatening storm could have been going on and we would still be ecstatic because we'd be at indoor recess continuing our tournament and letting it rip. And yes, I did buy these as well. About that, me now being a whole ass adult, forgot how they work. I did not realize that they didn't come with a launcher. So I basically just have two Beyblades that I cannot use. Whoa! This was one of those toys where if you thought you were too cool, you didn't really ever pick up a Beyblade. But I do gotta say, 
y'all were missing out. Eventually, yes, these did get banned as well. Shocker. But that did not stop us at all. So we had tournament guards, which would basically be on the lookout for our recess monitors to make sure that they weren't coming in the room. If they were, they would give us little caca. I don't know what it was, but probably something like that. It was kind of hard to hide that like big plastic battlefield. So we just actually used the insides of our lockers. To be fair with these ones getting banned, we did get, we got quite rowdy. Like imagine a room full of testosterone watching the Super Bowl. That was us watching Beyblades. And also if your finger got hit or God forbid it got slammed in between two of them, shit did hurt but after a while once they got banned the spark kind of dimmed down and we just all became disinterested smuggling a beyblade in was risking a written task tasks were like a warning before you got a detention you could get three tasks before getting a detention and these tasks consisted of a phrase that the teacher gave you and you had to write it 300 times but like imagine the embarrassment of writing i will not bring beyblades to school ugly overall i feel like fads are something that bring so many different types of people together and it, it can just be a really cool thing like even though most of my classmates went in drastic different directions with their current lives. I feel like if we were in a conversation and I brought up silly bands, for example, I'm sure we'd both be exploding about memories and how fun that time in our life was. And I don't know, it's just something about fads, are just such a cool thing. And I like it, like I said, I feel like they just bring people together. We are also starting to get to that age where things that we grew up with are either extremely faded out or might not even exist anymore. For example, fooey erasers, those do not exist anymore. Also, disclaimer, I do understand why schools may ban stuff like this you know fads obviously it can be very distracting and i'm even guilty of it distracting me and the other way is that some kids might not have been able to afford these items and i want to acknowledge that because again like i said earlier i was very spoiled you know i i, I am very much so aware of that and i'm very thankful that i was able to participate in these fads and maybe some of these fads are actually seen in negative light for some of those kids who weren't able to really participate in them but then again this could be different with every school you go to my school was pretty great in terms of sharing if there were silly bands that i had extras up i always would give it to my friends and you know if i noticed someone didn't have japanese racers i would actually give them one of mine and i feel like a lot of my friends did that as well there were people who were just given things and maybe that is because they weren't able to afford them completely stripping away fun stuff that you know helps kids really enjoy school and really feel like they can have a connection to their classmates that's where I see a problem because I actually feel like I bonded with a lot of my classmates when you know these fads are really popular I feel like we had something to talk about you know trading that was a conversation we got to have and I feel like fads actually brought so many of us closer but I did want to acknowledge why I do understand with some fads you know being taken away from us but man i can't let it rip at recess but if any of you guys have siblings or cousins or something like that who are middle schoolers at the moment i'd actually really like to know what fads are kind of happening right now for them let me know if there are any fads that i did not talk about that maybe you'd like to hear me talk about or even get and try and play with it and maybe i can make this a series question mark i don't know i feel like that'd be fun i appreciate you and i hope you enjoyed the video and kind of related to it a little bit make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to follow me my link tree will be in the description below as well as the elegance and geekery link if you guys would like to check the website out and yeah i think that would be a wrap peace out see you next time